everyone. Welcome to episode 60 of the Sales Quants Podcast, a production of Madison, Michigan and Market. And joining us today will be Brandon Bornanson, founder and CEO of Seamless.ai. Brandon's going to share the four pillars of building a massive sales machine. So I hope you get a lot out of the interview and we will talk to you after. one of the smartest, hardest working, most tenacious people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. So today's interview should be a lot of fun. So Brandon, we appreciate you being here on the Sales Quants podcast. And for the sake of introduction, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, but I want to hear it in terms of how you moved from a quota carrying sales leader, just consistently crushing your number, um, really out there building a massive business to a startup founder with a SaaS company and that and what that transition was like. So give us that background if you would. Yeah, thanks Jeff for for having me and for for having Seamless on the show. We appreciate you and uh too kind with the compliments. Uh yeah, I'm Brandon Bornanson, CEO and founder of Seamless AI. Um you know, have been in enterprise sales for nearly a decade and just realized the power of intelligence and data. To, to maximize revenue results and the necessity to have all the intelligence that you need for all your ideal customer personas in a in total addressable market, and then built a, a platform, a search engine that finds uh, perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights for everyone you need to sell to. So I went from being an enterprise sales rep to, uh, to a, a SaaS founder which has been a lot of fun and, and a ton of, of challenges along the way. I miss only focusing 100% of my time on pitching, selling, and prospecting uh, to where now you have to deal with product strategy, you have to deal with financials, operations, uh, culture, you name it, but uh, it definitely rounds you out pretty quickly. Right, so what, what, what was that like? What was that transition like? you know, the beauty of being in sales, right, is you have a target and you're always on and it's it's literally 24 seven building, if not, if not building pipeline, it's closing deals. And how, what was it like moving to where, you know, instead of uh, doing five pitches a day, you're wrestling with, like you said, you have a launch, right? So, oh, I have a launch and I have operational issues. How do you, how have you made that transition? And was that easy? And, and is it something that um, you would suggest others do? Yeah, great question. So I think on the sales front, your your calendar just gets more booked. Instead of doing five demos, you're doing like 12 demos uh, as a bootstrap startup. But you know, sales is the closest thing to being an entrepreneur because every day you wake up, you have to go out and you have to dig for gold. Uh, prospecting, the word prospecting actually came from back in the day in the gold rush when they would go and they would prospect for gold. And uh, I think entrepreneurship is exactly like that, where every day you have to wake up, you have to figure out what you're going to do, who you're going to sell to, what opportunities you're going to find and close to, to eat or to survive or to bring in revenue results. So moving from sales to entrepreneurship, I think, was a lot easier than if I had to move from account management or customer success to entrepreneurship. So it was easy from that perspective that you're really used to being highly accountable you have a ton of KPIs. Every day you have to go, go, go uh, 190%. So, th so that was easy. The hardest part was, you know, okay, putting together P&Ls, putting together financials, managing operations, managing expenses, uh, you know, invoicing, all of that jazz that when you work for, you know, IBM or Google or whatever, that's all outsourced and you don't need to worry about it. So – uh, it's, it just adds a lot of complexities just to your daily routine that you have to deal with. Um, the problem for me when I first started, I was so used to just sales, sales, sales. And the good part was we were building a sales automation software. So every day that we were selling, we were improving our software. But the problem was, is I was so focused on sales that, you know, you could fall behind on product strategy and product development. So uh, now I've become a, a well-rounded entrepreneur doing this for the past two years now where I, I'm obsessed with sales and predictable, repeatable revenue, but I'm also very, you know, I'm, I'm giving a ton of time and effort into 
all the other facets that make a well-rounded SaaS company. Right. No, that's a great point, Brandon. And, and that's so. That's interesting. You, that being said, you know, how do you build a high-powered sales machine? So clearly, I love the fact that entrepreneurship and sales are very similar to the extent that you 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 have to hold yourself highly accountable and you have to you have to get there and make it happen. So if someone is starting a company, or even if you have you know, an existing organization and you're an existing sales leader at a great organization, how do you build that high powered sales machine? What recommendations would, would you give to people? Yeah, when we're consulting, you know, we've got thousands of users um, that, that work with us at Seamless and a lot of them are startups or Fortune 500, you name it. And when we're talking to, to all these different clients that haven't nailed or who are just getting started, you know, we talk about the four key pillars to building a predictable, repeatable, scalable revenue machine. And those four key pillars are number one, contacts. You need to know the contacts that you're selling to. Who are your ideal customer personas, your ideal account personas, your ideal industry personas? You got to have the first pillar, the contacts of the people that you're going to sell to. Second pillar, you need to have content. Once you have the contacts, what are you going to say and how are you going to say it to deliver value, to challenge the customer, to get them to want to meet with you, to get them to want to learn what you have to offer and buy your solution. And then the third pillar is activity. Once you have the, the contacts and you have the contact, you need to hustle your ass off and generate as much omni-channel outbound sales activity as possible. Calling, emailing, social selling, video, direct messaging, blogging, all, you know, every single multi-channel outbound sales, you know, tactic that you can leverage, you got to get after it. And the fourth pillar to do all three of those is talent. You got to have the right sales talent to make it happen. But even if you don't have the right sales talent, you can still get the contacts, write the content and then execute. So I always push customers, hey, figure out who your ideal customer personas are, build that a total prospecting list, write the content to those personas to get them to want to meet with you by delivering value and then hustle, 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 execute, execute, execute. Yeah. Right. Love that. So, I mean, those four pillars are awesome. And, and that being said, this whole idea, when you, when you said activity, you know, I, it's, I started to shudder because that's, that's something we all struggle with every day, right? We've called it the tyranny of choice. We have so many opportunities to, break through and build trust and credibility and kind of reach out to our prospects and not and it's not just phone and email anymore right so you have, like you said on the channel strategies so what do you do what do you recommend people do to break the ice if you have once you get your contacts loaded and you have a really good sense of who your ideal client is and your you know the the universe you're targeting how do you break the ice like what have you done to break the ice yes uh great question so you have to put yourself in the in the persona shoes. Uh, one of the books that really taught me this, like a decade ago, was Joe Conrath selling to big companies and and trigger events selling. Uh, I forget the title of the the trigger book, but um, you know, Jill wrote this persona. Uh, it was literally the first page of the book. That's like, hey, I'm your prospect. I get fifty thousand emails, a hundred thousand calls. I'm in thirty different meetings. I've got a hundred tasks that I'm behind on. Like I am inundated behind everything I need to get done. And then my kid broke her leg. My wife is busy. You know, you name it. You've got a thousand things going on. So, you know, I think you first got to put yourself in the persona shoes to understand how busy they are and how much that they don't care about what you are trying to sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, then once you do that, you, I, I believe, we believe that you have to leverage intelligence and research on your ideal customer persona to show them, A, you know you know who they are and what they do. B, you can showcase where they are today. And then C, you're gonna chat with them and walk them through where you're gonna take them tomorrow with your solution. So we believe in, in highly customized, personalized, research-driven outreach. So if you're gonna reach out to uh, Marketo, you know, you would research everything there is to know about Marketo. You know that they're a best in class marketing automation engagement platform. You know all the latest news that they just acquired Town App, that they just hired a new chief sales revenue officer, that they just opened up another office. You name it. Uh, you look at their industries. Okay, they're going after financial services, education, technology, you name it. 
and then leverage all that data, maybe from the 10Ks or publicly available, privately available, or what Seamless recommends to you, and put together uh, an email, a social touch, a call that talks about, okay, hey, I know you're going after the software industry. I know you got a lot going on with all these new acquisitions, the new office, you're trying to penetrate a new market. Put together a message that communicates how you're going to help them accomplish that smarter, better, faster, more cost effective, or make them more money, and then tie it back into how your solution will make that happen. So leveraging data and intelligence to highly personalize and, and offer value to that persona to get them to, to move to the next stage. Right. Everyone gets a thousand emails to book a demo. You know, right now, every day I, I get like a hundred calls with people that are prospecting me and, and our, my personas are getting a thousand calls. No one gives a shit about sitting in another demo with you. Right. Like they just don't care. And salespeople are lazy, right? So 95% of the salespeople are lazy when they're sending cold, non-personalized, non-value-driven messaging. So the best way to break through the noise, research, offer value, personalize, and, and show them where you can take them. So you're saying the volume game is over, right? So it has to be highly customized, really de high degrees of precision and relevance, but then still the ability to move. And I think that's people often think the trade-off is either I'm highly customized and highly relevant or I move fast and at scale. But what, you're, what I hear you saying is that you can move fast and at scale and still be highly customized and relevant. Is that where we've gone? We've evolved. Yeah. So, so the the volume game is, is essentially over without context. So, if you want to play the volume game, you have to have context and be contextual and personalized to your your ICPs, your ideal customer personas. Because if you just do an email, hey, it's Brandon. I'm at Seamless. We're the world's best sales automation software, powered by artificial intelligence. We help you know, Marketo, Google, Facebook, like no one gives a shit about me or what we do, right? It's just spray and pray, talking about product, talking about benefits, no one cares. Um, and, and that's high volume without context. But if I lead with context and lead, lead with relevance by researching everything there is to know about you ahead of time, I think you could do mass personalization at scale with data. So if I know who Jeff is and I know who Madison to market is and I know what you sell, I know your clients, I know who you're trying to sell to, I know the challenges that you're facing, I can take all that data, get it into Salesforce or my CRM and then do mass volume and then I'm customizing all my messaging based on all the research that I get into my CRM. And that's, right. you know, what we believe in mass personalization at scale. I see. And does that inevitably build trust and credibility? Like, what do you recommend people do to build trust and credibility? Once they're in that process, say they get that attention, how do you build trust and credibility? Yeah, I, I think, you know, using personalization and, and value and research is, is number one, right, in today's really noisy landscape. And then if, if you say that you're interested in meeting with me or you're interested in learning more, I believe in, you know, the next phase, like if you're doing a demo, I believe in, you know, the first 10 minutes should be all about the prospect should, and, and learning as much in that discovery as humanly possible about them. And don't ask them, what do you do? Like <laughs> if I ask Jeff what Madison and Market does, like I, I, I hope you hang up the phone. Buzz off. Because, <laughs> yeah, get like, the it's on the website. Right. You know what I like? There's so much data out there that if you don't come highly prepared, uh, you just look like an idiot. So I'm talking about deeper, like, okay, what is your current executional tactics? What, you know, what are your biggest growth challenges in selling Madison to market or in selling sales sponsor, whatever you may do. So that 10 minute discovery and then strategy all about like, not just pushing your features and your benefits, but strategically really thinking, okay, here's where Jeff is today. Here are some strategies to take you to where you need to go tomorrow, and here are the, the results that you can expect from executing that approach. Being very consultative, whether you sell widgets, whether you sell cars, like you know, if you're if you're selling a car, what why is he why is that person buying the car? Where are they trying to go? What are they trying to do with their family? Like, really try to figure out that strategy and the results you're going to generate with the, the the platform that you're selling or the solutions that you're offering. Right, right. Love it, love it. So you're saying with intelligence, 
comes credibility, right? And that's where I, I completely agree with you. If you show up and ask these, you know, as we were trained years ago, broad, open-ended questions, you know, expecting the prospect to just dump on you and, and fulfill, give you their entire strategy, it's, it's, it is like shame on you for not doing the homework and, and getting prepared ahead of time. And that, like you said, that inevitably results in just, you know, people moving on. So, uh, Brandon, we're going to, we're going to, these are great tips. I mean, we're going to keep moving here and I want to dig a little bit into the personal side of Brandon, right? So here you are crushing it, right? You've had a a great career. You're, you're running a, you know, great organization, a great SaaS startup. What are you doing, um, you definitely, I know you work 24 seven or if I think you work 25 seven, right? 25, seven, 370. Somehow you find that extra time. So, but, uh, what are you reading? What are you listening to? Like, what do you do to kind of, you know, recharge yourself or inspire? How do you get inspired? Yeah. Uh, great question. So, you know, I've been lately, I've been reading a lot of, you know, Jeb Lund's new book, Keenan's book, um, Grant Cardone's new book, you know, basically anything that comes out, uh, I try to pick up quickly, listen to it on audio, um, quick hack, you know, if you start to listen to books at 2x the speed, 3x the speed on your iPhone, your brain will pick it up quickly and you'll be able to move through content. You could go through a book in like three hours at 2x the speed. That's awesome. So uh, just really learned about listening to, the, you know, audio books at 2x to 3x. Um, also picked up The Multiplier's Effect. Love that book by Liz Wiseman. And uh, I would say those are the, the latest things that I'm reading. And wow. Ton of, ton of blogs, you hey, know, everything that's online. Speaking of Grant Cardone, so I don't know if you saw this article about, um, you know, Nice Guys Finish Last. It was a very, very gender-specific article. Did you read that by any chance? No, no, I, I missed it. I missed it. Um, you know, it, it, I love I, – when I think about, like, the four pillars that we had talked about, mm-hmm. the, the thing that I love about Grant is he, he pushes you on the activity pillar. Yeah. Um, you know, really hustling because ev- everything that we're doing from an execution perspective, if we think we did a great job at the gym running, we could have gone probably 10 minutes, 30 miles, you know, 10 miles further than we really did. Or if we're prospecting, we made 50 calls, we probably could have really have done 100. And I love listening to Grant to really push our activity and our outbound execution and then I, I, you know, work and, and read and preach a lot of like in, in Reno and a lot of those guys on the, the strategy execution side of the pillars. Right, right. No, that's cool. It, it's I agree with the hustle uh, sentiment. And I think he my point I was trying to get to in this world of how do you break through, really find your ideal clients, break the ice, build trust and credibility he knows his ideal clients, the gender composition of his audience is most likely 99% male. And he probably doesn't care that he alienated every female sales professional on the planet with that article. And so is that a smart strategy, right? Is it smart to alienate, uh, you know, just activate your base and alienate people who aren't in your base? What do you think about that if, if your base is big enough? Yeah, I think he, he's figured out how to get attention. Uh, you know, he, he's really nailed how to get attention. The guy's on 24-7. So, um, like, recording live on all the time. And um, I, I'd love to eventually move it into that space where we're running a startup and, and always kind of, like, on teaching all the time. And I think sometimes when, when you're always on – you're going to have um, different topics that cause a lot of ruckus or um, create a lot of debate, which is always good. Um, Personally, you know, we're big on don't see race or gender or anything. We just see, we just look for rainmakers. Like I don't care anything about like if you're a rainmaker or a hustler, that's, that's all I care about. Uh, And that's what we hire for. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's definitely interesting when it comes to alienating the audience. Yeah, right, right. There's a lot to, get, to dig into there. But, you know, let's wrap it up. So, Brandon, tell us, uh, tell us where to find you, what you're working on, and, uh, and just kind of go from there. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm Brandon Bornanson, CEO and founder of Seamless AI. We built a sales automation software powered by artificial intelligence that will give you perfect emails, phone numbers, and insights for any professional in the world. Uh, we'd love to give the sales quants community you know, free licenses. If you go to seamless.ai, you could sign up for free and in referral code, just put in sales quants and we'll make sure you guys are all set up. And that way you could use our search engine or our platform to, to uh, build prospecting lists of your total addressable market in, uh, in minutes versus weeks or months. Great, great. Hey, Brandon. And thanks. you can find us at seamless.ai. Okay, no, that's good. Seamless.ai. Brandon, this has been great. Really lots of great insight here. So thanks for sharing with the audience today. Hey, thanks for hanging in there on the Sales Quants podcast. Hope you really enjoyed that interview with Brandon. If you have any questions about Brandon or anything you covered, especially the four pillars of driving a massive sales machine, please definitely visit the website salesquants.com. That's sales, Q-U-A-N-T-S dot com. Hit the contact us tab on the upper right hand side of the website and fill out a quick form and also we have a freebie we're giving away it's the single most chart to determine sales productivity so really how to separate your rock stars from your laggards and it's the best chart i've ever seen and love to send you a free copy of that so please hit the site and i will talk to you next week cheers